Hey guys, we're here to go over a video today that is um, a question that I get a lot. That is, what is reaping? So we're talking about a concept called knee reaping that is a rule that is illegal in IBJJF tournaments or ones that are run under those rules. And it's a very commonly misunderstood um, position or uh, movement that can get somebody completely DQ'd from their match. So it's definitely something that you want to understand as a competitor if you're going into those tournaments. And um, also there may be a couple little subtleties that we're going to show here that you may not have understood. So you might save yourself a DQ, which is always a big deal. Um, but just understanding the rules and how to work within them is, is very important for any competitor. Uh, on top of that, once we get through what is knee reaping, uh, what to do, what not to do involving it, um, uh, I also want to touch on some other dangerous uh, movements involving legs that are actually legal. So still something to keep in mind for the safety of your own knees. All right, so first off, I apologize that we're both wearing black. It might be a little difficult to tell what the legs are doing, but mostly just watch my foot because this is what's going to be important. Uh, first of all, the action of knee reaping. If you think of the leg that you're attacking as the attacker, in a leg entanglement situation as three actuation points, one at the hip, one at the knee, one at the ankle. Knee reaping is where you isolate the top two and the motion that you're creating puts lateral inwards force on that middle one being the knee. So whatever your force application is, is going to twist or otherwise force the outside of this knee inwards. That is a knee reap. So let's show some things that apply more specifically to what they're looking for in tournament. So if I get to a single leg X position or ashigurami where I have my foot on the hip here isolating the hip, I'm down here isolating the foot for the attack, this knee is fine. It's straight right now. The whole leg is straight. The knee line is, is connected, right? We're keeping it straight. The problem happens uh, one of two reasons. One is this foot crosses the center line of the attacked leg this direction. I'm getting to like more the center line of his body. This is going to be called a reap. And especially if you bring it all the way across the other side of the body, both of those can be immediate DQs. So always be aware of where your foot is in relation to the leg that you're attacking. This one right here, we want to know that our heel is, is no uh, further than the center line of that leg. As it starts coming across, they're going to start giving you uh, warnings or penalties, uh, separating the position. But if it crosses significantly to the center of the body or further, it's going to be a full DQ. And this can be fast. You can be here fighting for something and go like this and it's over. Just like even if you come here and back, too late. If the ref saw that, they're going to kill it. They're going to stop the match and give you a loss for that one. So uh, I did mention there are two different ways that this can happen. Uh, let me change over to this leg here so you can see. So I'm going to the same position where I'm grabbing the ankle. I've got my foot across the heel or the heel across the hip here. Now I don't even have to cross my foot across the center of his body to be reaping. What I have to or what I uh, can also do to cause this to be a reap is I'm clamping here. I've got a nice straight leg, but I turn towards the free leg in this direction. So why is this a reap? I've still got a straight line on my uh, leg that I'm attacking. I'm still isolating the hip and the ankle, but the pulling pressure here can, as I arch my back back, bring this foot from straight to out like this, where we're going to have that inwards flexion on the leg, causing uh, danger on that knee to be blown inwards as I lean in this direction. Even if we're all the way down like this, Elvin, I'm sure, can feel some torque on the knee. It's not very comfortable. And that extension can blow the knee. So they always want you to fall towards the trapped side. So again, if we're on this leg, falling over here, perfectly legal. Just watch the foot position. If I fell the other direction, they're going to call that a reap. Again, you've lost the match. You've uh, contravened the rules and they're going to kill you for that. They're going to set, stand you up, point to you and do one of these, and it's a terrible experience for everybody. So uh, one other way that is less understood that you can be called for reaping is if my opponent is standing and I've got this uh, single leg X position here, I don't even have to be touching the heel or the ankle down here to be causing isolation because gravity itself is isolating this foot in place. If I were to throw this across, even though I'm not touching his leg, 
This is a reap. You can see the bend on the knee, the inward flexion. They're going to call me because of my foot here, uh, crossing that center line of the body, but also because this is isolated by gravity. Again, you just think you can get away with it because you're not connecting here, one and two. It's, it's not good enough. Here is going to be a reap. That's going to be a DQ, so watch out for that. All right, so a common question that um, I get from people who aren't used to training in under IBJJF rules, uh, but do like the leg locks, a very powerful and commonly used position in the leg entanglements is the saddle position or inside Senkaku, 411, honey hole, whatever you want to call it, where you've got the cross leg coming across here, we're triangling up and really locking down the quad on this near leg right here. Very powerful position for all sorts of leg locks down here, but what can and can't I do in an IBJJF scenario? Up here, I've got his hip isolated with this triangle, okay? The moment that I touch this leg down here, the, this ankle, it becomes a reap because I've isolated the hip and I've got uh, the ankle isolated and my outside leg is significantly over top of that center line of the body, right? My heel is only allowed halfway along his quad. So I don't ever want to touch the, the foot of the leg that I'm connected to if I get myself into a saddle situation in IBJJF. Even if we start coming here and start coming here for our Texas Cloverleaf, this is a DQ, okay? We're still isolating this foot. It can turn into a, a knee bar, which are legal, but the position I'm in right now for IBJJF, they'll call you. Um, so that being said, if I wanted to turn my hips over top of this leg here, now I can grab the foot and go for knee bars because I've got a straight knee. I'm not worried about any inward flexion. There's no reap possibility there. Uh, one thing, uh, again, from this position that I can do legally attacking the legs is to attack the foot on the opposite side here. So we can pass this one over, which is still going to isolate this leg. It's hard for him to defend. And we can start hitting uh, straight ankle locks here. You can even bring it over here and start hitting straight ankle locks there. Um, well in this saddle position as long as we aren't isolating that foot. And same thing, if he gets up and puts gravity down on that thing, um, if you come up right to your foot, yeah, it's difficult to do, but this is going to be a, a reap. If he can stand up, like they'll call you before, before he gets to a, a standing position because he's starting to isolate his own foot. Uh, which brings me to one of my last topics on here. So if Elvin has Ashigurami on me, now he's doing the proper thing. If you can see his heel here is right in that center line of my quad. It's a nice controlling position. If I know the rules, and I want to be an, a jerk, I start passing his foot across to turn it into a reap. Now, what happens in that situation? By the rules, I'm getting DQ'd because I'm forcing an illegal position. I'm the culprit here. Even though it's me that I'm putting into danger, I don't want to do this um, for safety purposes, but me forcing this position against my opponent's will that puts me at fault and I'm breaking the rules. So you can't be that guy. You can't be that smart guy. Be like, ah, I can't get out of this position. I'm going to force a reap. Oh, ref, ref, ref. He sees you push that over. You're getting stood up and you're getting DQ'd. Keep that in mind. All right. So I'd mentioned that we were going to touch on uh, legal positions that are still dangerous on legs. And there's no greater culprit than the 50-50 position. This is a very... Uh, hard to escape entanglement, especially at high levels when everybody understands um, the how-tos of 50-50. They just stop you from escaping and there's lots of ways to stagnate this position. Um, one thing that happens sometimes is when, let's bring it back a little bit here, when I come up to the top part of 50-50 here, I force the top and there's a separation on his foot. He hasn't triangled, he hasn't locked his ankles here. Is pushing forward like this can blow his knee. And I've seen it happen more than once in tournament because I'm forcing an inwards flexion, which is legal. I'm not forcing his leg in this direction, which is illegal, forcing it this way, which is fine. And you'll see some guys here, they'll get like this right on their hip and they'll go head and arm control and just start leaning in. And you see that knee go, it blows right up. So very important to know both from the defending side as well as the offending side. This is legal, but it's very dangerous. You're gonna get somebody hurt. So especially when you're in the training room, you get into some sort of entanglement like this where you're getting big flexion going uh, inwards 
or sorry, I guess outwards here. We're twisting this heel up like in a lotus position forcibly. Um, you're gonna blow knees there. And I've, again, I've seen it happen. This isn't like a might happen, this will happen. Uh, one other way that this can happen is a position called the Captain Morgan, where if we were in our straight Ashigarami right here, and I pass this foot into double outside, grab this ankle here and come up like this and start turning towards my partner, trying to basically face the opposite direction. I'm not gonna do this with Elvin because I've literally had my knee blown from this. Um, that is legal. You've got a straight ankle lock here and I can turn this direction and lean that way. You can, if you have stiff knees, get this thing absolutely ruptured. You're gonna blow LCLs, um, nasty stuff, all your, all your ligaments that you don't wanna go. If you get to this position again in the training room, I would suggest that you take this ankle and lean backwards in this position to keep it safe. The more you turn so that my back is facing Elvin, the more I'm gonna crank this leg. And again, perfectly legal, horribly dangerous. So there you have a good overview of what is knee reaping. I know that there's a lot of uh, arguments and egos that like to hate on this rule and I understand it, I'm not really for or against it, but what it is is a rule that is in the biggest tournament series in the world. So if you have competed for IBJJF or if you haven't, you're probably going to in the time that you're competing because they put on more tournaments than anybody by far. Um, the most important ones in the Gi are gonna be IBJJF. So for sure understand this rule, even if it's just so that you don't get yourself DQ'd. Hope this helps guys. If you have any questions or any extra things to add to this, uh, feel free to drop them in the comment section. Make sure you subscribe for future videos and we'll see you then.